So let's talk about state and local constitutions. So the structures of state government, state constitutions establish state governments and separate power among the three branches of government. That sounds familiar, right? Because our national government does that same thing between the legislative, the executive and the judicial branches. State legislatures pass laws that deal with state issues. The national Congress, the national legislature passes laws that deal with national issues. That makes sense. Each state's executive branch is headed by a governor with the power to carry out state laws. That makes sense because the president in the executive branch carries out national laws. State constitutions establish courts to interpret state laws. The US constitution established the Supreme Court to interpret national laws. A state constitution cannot conflict with the US constitution. That's called the supremacy clause. The U.S. Constitution is the highest in the pecking order. Nothing can go against the U.S. Constitution. State governments are below the U.S. Constitution. So each state constitution includes a Bill of Rights containing all or most of the rights found in the U.S. Constitution's Bill of Rights. State constitutions can be amended by ballot initiatives, amendments proposed by the legislature, constitutional conventions, or constitutional commissions. Any amendment to a state constitution that a federal court determines is in conflict with the US Constitution must be removed. Local governments like the city of Tallahassee exist only if a state constitution creates them and gives them authority. State constitutions regulate the ways local governments can raise and spend money. State governments issue charters to local communities to form their own government. So they have to get permission from the state government to be, be a city. Most charters establish three branches of local government and the powers and duties of each. So we still have the three branches of government. Local charters and laws cannot conflict with the state constitution or the US constitution. So the pecking order, US constitution's at the top, state constitution's the middleman and then local constitutions are at the bottom. <coughs> All right, so we're gonna look at this diagram. I'm gonna start <coughs> No. I don't know what's wrong. All right, so here we have the state constitutions and analysis of them. So you see they create the structure of the state government. They establish different types and powers of local government. They contain a bill of rights. They establish independent state agencies, boards, and commissions. They regulate the ways state and local governments can raise and spend money. And they separate the powers among three branches. Some of those sound really familiar, right? Because some of them are in the US Constitution, the National Constitution. So how are the state constitutions similar to the federal constitution? They separate powers among three branches and they include a bill of rights. Do state constitutions create governments with the same structure and powers in each state? <coughs> no, although all states have three branches of government, there are variations. And how might a state constitution address the issue of gas and electricity rates? A state constitution might establish a public utility commission to regulate the gas and electricity rates. That means to make them pretty standard. All right, the last thing I have for you guys is this handy video about state constitutions. Constitutions are the first official governments of independence. And many of the states rush very quickly to write their constitutions. Massachusetts has a terrible time. They write it, it's rejected, they write it, it's rejected. But other states very quickly introduce governing documents for themselves. They're very similar in form. That is, the governments that are created are very similar to the old colonial governments and, and in many ways carry out traditions of Anglo-American culture. 
they have all the elements that the English government has in the sense of division of, of branches of government, executive, legislative, judicial, and independent judiciary. They have checks and balances. They have an elected branch of government. And so in many ways, they reflect hundreds of years of what would be called Anglo-American tradition. What's unusual about them and reflect the revolution is that almost every one of them begin with long declarations of the rights of the citizens. But many of these early state constitutions have what comes to be in the national constitution, the Bill of Rights, have it right up front. That's the beginning and that indicates how concerned about the sovereignty of the people the revolutionaries were. And these state governments varied a lot. Um, some were very radical. They had only one house of the legislature that is only a branch of the government that was elected by the voters, didn't have an upper house which was seen as more aristocratic. Pennsylvania uh, toyed with the idea of not having a governor, that is no executive branch at all. Other states were really quite uh, conservative and continued old traditions of you had to own a certain amount of property to vote, which was true in almost every state. You had to own more property to serve in the lower house, more property to serve in the Senate, and even more to serve in the governorship. The Carolinas, for instance, had very conservative constitutions. But what ties all these state constitutions together is this willingness to put down in print what the rights of the people are, rights of the citizens are. All right, so now I'm gonna release your computers and I want you guys to be working on the reading essentials. Discussion question 111 and the local, uh, I'm sorry, state constitutions local charter quiz and make it to the uh, article two on your ingenuity. That's where you're supposed to be.